Hello and welcome to Fueling Around with me, Jason Plato, and the Carnation in my buttonhole. It's Dave Vitti. Hello. Fueling Around is powered by Adrian Flux. As the UK's largest specialist insurance broker, Adrian Flux will tailor a quote to your exact needs and help save you money on your car, your bike, or even your home insurance. Dave, how are you? You look, you look, you look, you look, um, titivated. Well, I'm physically excited. I'm like a cord spring today. And, you know, for that reason, we need to move straight on, Jason. Well, do you know what? We, we don't have long. Mm. Our guest today is a gentleman. And I love saying that, but he generally is a gentleman mm. who's quite simply one of the greatest racing drivers this country, i.e. GB, has ever produced. He's an international superstar for the world of Formula One. It is, of course, the one and only, my old mate, Jensen Button. Hello, pal. How are you? I'm good. I'm blushing. Oh, <laughs> did I say anything untrue? I don't think I did, did I? Uh, I I've, I can't possibly comment. But lovely to see you guys. And you? Thank you. No, listen, thank you very much. It's wonderful to have you on here and joining us on Fueling Around. Uh, Jensen, you star in a brand new documentary series on Disney Plus entitled Braun, The Impossible Formula One Story. It's a four-parter. It's released today, today on Wednesday the 15th, which is really exciting. Whose idea was it to document this brilliant tale? All mine. <laughs> was it? What, what was it generally? Because I know you quite. Every now and then you might you might have a little bit of but. but was it really? <laughs> no, uh, it's scary as it's fifteen years ago. But mm. you know, life just takes over, and you just move on, and you do new yeah, things, yeah. and you have kids, <laughs> and you get married, and you don't look at the past as much as probably we should. You know, and especially yeah, yeah, things absolutely. achieved. So no, it was um, it was actually. Keanu and his team, they got in touch. Oh, was it? Said we'd like to, to do a documentary about the 2009 season. Um, so supposedly Keanu heard about it from a friend. And they said, did you ever hear about this 2009 year where a team was bought for a pound and they okay. won the World Championship? <laughs> and Keanu's like, what? Uh, looked into it, got into it. Uh, and as Keanu does, just head, head first into it. And he did such a good job. He really, really did of bringing this... Uh, amazing year. I mean, the story is the story, right? But he's yeah, yeah. able to go out and get the interviews he wants, and not many other people probably could. No, you know, probably right, but, but 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 was he always a fan? I mean, is he is a genuine fan of F one? Yeah, he loves his cars, he loves his bikes, he loves competition, he loves sport, and I think more importantly, he loves a good story. Mm. And uh, he definitely had a good starting point, and you know, it's um, it's lovely that it's documented. One because. You know, it gives me time to stop and look back yeah. and remember that year. Yeah. It's also great because I've got kids now. They get to see me race. They get to see yeah. me this year, which is cool. I know kind of what that's like because when my, my kids were super young, they had no idea what, I mean, because, you know, nothing compared to you, but I'm like, oh, you're not, you not showing any interest. But it's <laughs> lovely, isn't it? It is lovely. Um, you know, I did a NASCAR race earlier this year and our, our kids jumped in the seat just before I went out for mm. the race. No, it's, it is lovely. It's very emotional. And, and, and also there's a new, there's, there's millions of new fans of this sport, right? Yeah. F1. Yeah. And they've seen Red Bull and they've seen Mercedes fight for victories and championships. I mean, they, they would think this is implausible that yeah. a small team bought for a pound could fight against the, <laughs> you know, the big teams. But it happened. I mean, yeah, if yeah, this yeah. was a movie, uh, a fictional movie, you'll say, well, that doesn't work because that's never going to happen. Yeah, this yeah. is impossible. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's such a special year in the sport, I think, and it's documented very well by Keanu and his team. Now, that's why, that's why it just works so well. As I say, and you watch the trailer and you just think, this just looks brilliant. And almost to, to an extent, and I mean this as a compliment, it almost feels like it could be a work of fiction because it has all that sort of razzmatazz that you get with the Hollywood thing. And then you have to kind of go, no, this is real. This is, this is absolutely, you know, this is a documentary. This, this really happened. And as you say, back in 2009, whenever that was, 14 years ago, something like that. Did you know Keanu before this project, Jensen? No, no. So uh, he'd been to a couple of F1 races. I'd met mm. him. Met him. Uh, and then we had, we had lunch in, in LA, talked me through it. And I saw his excitement. So then when we started filming, I didn't expect anything but the best. And he was, yeah. he was awesome. He knew everything he needed to know. And he knew how to extract the right questions or right answers mm. from his questions. So no, he, uh, he did a great job. But do, do, do you know what, just what we're talking about then, you know, if you look back in history and you look at you know, all, all the moments that Formula One has produced, whether it be 
you know, Nicky Lauda pulling out of the final race of the year and James Hunt winning. Mm. I mean, so, so many, so many, uh, you know, Prost and Senna. This is an epic moment because it, <laughs> it doesn't happen ever. Yeah. It's, well, it's something off the scale. Oh, I mean, it's off the clock, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, the story in itself where a, a small team wins the World Championship, yes. But then you look at the season as a whole and it's another story altogether. You know, we yeah. win six out of seven races and then my the car's performance drops off. My performance definitely drops off. My head's in, you know, I'm just... And what, what, actually, what, why? Why explain that? Because that's interesting. What... You put so much pressure on yourself, don't you, when you're when you're winning mm. to keep yeah. winning, and everything yeah. else is a failure. So even second place is a failure at that point. And you see it on Max Verstappen now; he's won the championship, <laughs> and if he's not quite as quick in one sector, he's super angry on the radio, and that's mm. what it does. It turns you into a monster, a beast. You know? It does, and uh, and then when you do have one failure, suddenly it just spirals. Um, and my head wasn't in the right place, and you know motorsport a big part of it is not just about natural ability it's about yeah. where your head's at yeah, yeah. um which uh which is getting more and more interest and i see it with so many drivers in this sport and now drivers are being more open with their emotions mm. and feelings and you know saying that they're struggling before for us it was like i don't want to show that to my to my competitors that weakness yeah, yeah. i'm well, a real I man can, i can yeah. bench press uh, to 10 kilos <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Exactly. So, no, I like the way that it's going with, with sport at the moment. People are being more open because that's that's yeah, a straight. Too. Um, but anyway, but so you go through this high, massive low, and then we win the championship with a race to go from starting at the back. Um, it just, you couldn't script it any better. I mean, living it was yeah. a hell of a lot more stressful than the documentary perceives, but of course, it's yeah. such a good documentary, such a good story. Mm. When you look back on it now, Jensen, and you look back to that period of, time in motor racing history i mean the whole story it ruffled a lot of feathers understandably um, but it was an absolute breath of fresh air in terms of what the braun team was doing you know do you think that that was the shake-up that the sport needed at the time yeah definitely and, and i love seeing the interviews of certain people in the sport and it still hurts them that year that they were beaten mm. by a small team christian mm. Hunter, red bull luca de montezemolo ferrari bernie it, it's still great and that's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it's, it's such a good story that, you know, a small team pulling together, you know, on the brink of most of them not having a job and we're coming mm. into the holiday period. It's amazing what you do when you're put on the edge, right? Yeah, put on yeah, the yeah, edge, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, and do you know what you, you, say, you say that? We've inter- you know, we, we've interviewed quite a lot of, you know, epic drivers like yourself. And everyone has said that way where, when, the, where, when the conversation's gone that way. When it really matters, somehow you just find that little bit extra. And True, also you, just, you, you look to your, your mate in terms of your, you know, the person you're working next to in the team and you're pulling together and working together a lot more. You know, this is a sport that you never really see mistakes anymore. Well, we don't think mm. we see. We don't think there are mistakes. They happen. They're behind the scenes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about having the right people around you to support you through that. And I don't know how these guys got this engine fitted into the car. I mean, it, uh, it, uh, I really don't know. Back in it was end of two thousand. No, I started two thousand nine when they yeah. put the Merck engine in the back, and they've got this big spacer that they're trying to fit it. I mean, you wouldn't even do that in F three or touring. Was, was it, <laughs> it just? Like, That's never nah, going to be. Competitive. Nah. Think how quick we could have been. Mm. <laughs> So, so he is, well, I've got a question, but before I answer it or ask it, is it true that you had to get medics in Brazil to put your eyes back back in? <laughs> they did have a friend once that had a glass eye that popped it into someone's beer. Yeah, in, in an F1 race. And then someone oh, drank that's it. that's awful. And as they drank it, they threw the beer across the room and the eyeball went across the room. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, ah! Yeah, but no... Um, no, that was, yeah, the emotion. It just hit. Hell of a well. moment, eh? Yeah. And as I, you know, I say in the documentary that I didn't party with the rest of the team. I went to say thank you to everyone. I left mm. and just sat on my own, sat on my own Did- in the hotel room, just running through my life and the emotion just hit. Is that right? I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, a couple of hours in my hotel room, just starting from the karting, cadet karting and going up through and, you know the the positives and negatives and and then it got to a point after two hours i was like 
oh, oh crap. <laughs> what, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now? You don't you don't plan on what happens after winning a world championship or your you know your main goal in life. I had no idea what I was gonna do from then yeah. on, and that was when I decided to jump ship. When you look at the F1 championship now, Jensen, which you obviously do, and you look at it from a different perspective, do you find it as exciting as it perhaps was in your day? Can you look at it in that way? And can you find comparables? Is that possible? It's tricky because we can say, oh, you know, this is this is boring. One guy's winning all the races. Mm. But this, this year will go down in history. Mm. You know, the championships that are won by such a big margin go down in history. You know, Michael Schumacher is um, the dominance of the McLaren when when Ayrton and Alain won the world championship. Nobody could yeah. touch them. No. Um, so it will go down in history. And and I have to say, if you look at the numbers and the results, yeah, it doesn't look great. But I think we've got some bloody good racing this year. Mm-hmm. Not all I the agree. races, but we have had some really good racing um, up and down the field. It's not been a walk in the park for Max either. So um, I've enjoyed it, I have to say. Mm. Uh, Sprint races or sprints, not so much, apart from Brazil, which was amazing. Amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, More I races loved in that. Brazil, please. Yeah, yeah. What wasn't it? Wasn't it just epic? For, for, for every reason. Yeah. yeah and, and, what, and, whilst, and whilst we're talking on about that, we, we have to give a shout out to, to Fernando. Oh, yeah, we do. What a performance. We well, he's one of what us. A wily he? old fox. He's one of us. One of us old yeah. boys. Um, he's 42, I think, this, later this year. So, no, amazing. And, if you still want it, you still got it. Yeah. In, in your forties, you if you still want. I, I mean, how old are you now? Are you, fifty-six. Are you fifty-six just, just turned. Fifty-six just turned. Have you just retired? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were racing in your fifties, and you were bloody quick. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I, do, do, do you know what? Which I don't know whether to be proud of or ashamed of, but I'm 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 the oldest person to ever win a British Tour race. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you should. I think you should be proud of that. Oh, do you know what I am? But <laughs> yeah, oh you god, fifty-three. That's, I think fifty-three. I want to go. And I'm not being rude, but he's probably a little fitter. Not saying you're not fit, buddy, but it just takes me back to 2005 Whistler. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? Where I, I saw this man on a ski slope. I'm like, JP. <laughs> 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 Yeah, which is which you always know it's going to end up bad. I think that that could perhaps be the next four part from <laughs> Keanu Reeves is you know Whistler, the impossible story of Jason. Uh, oh, mate, yeah. what what happens in Whistler stops in Whistler. <laughs> but JP, you know the score. So mo- yeah, indeed. Mo- moving swiftly on, Jensen. Uh, we always like to ask our guests a little bit about their motoring past. You know their their history, where they where they came to, some of the more mundane things. I'm going to sort of condense this question because we we're running out of time. So I'm going to ask you, what was the first car that you ever owned, and indeed, what is the current driver? What's the fleet? What does what does it look like? I, I lo- it's so much easier doing this with someone that's British because I, I get asked this question all around the world and it, mm. you know, like Vauxhall Cavalier. They're like, uh, nice. what's, what's that? Um, but yeah, I had a Vauxhall Cavalier, 1990, yep. 90,000 nice. miles on the clock. Mm-hmm. One of 2,000 pounds myself when I was 17. It two, was grand for, two grand for a Cavalier. That's yeah. strong yeah. money. And- <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was seven years old. Um, so, yeah, I lowered it, put some wheels on it. I won the the 97 European Karting Championship. And my dad said before the race, said, if you win, I'm going to get you some alloys. So he did. No, Set of no. 17s. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, when they were massive, weren't they back then? Yeah. It was yeah. Back then. Yeah. yeah. I think it came with 14s. Uh, and then SPAC suspension and uh, some big uh, six by nines in the back. Yeah. Oh, mate, and you it. were the see, in the parcel shelf, six by nines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Velvet, velvet parcel shelf, yeah. Yeah, oh, wicked. Yeah, it was good. Uh, and now, um, I love my classic cars, I have to say. Do you? So I've, got, I've got an E-Type. It took me three years to restore um, by a company in the UK. Bloody, did an amazing job. It's like new, but it drives well. So mm. uh, racing mm. much and what have you on it. So I drive that in the canyons, and that's the best thing because you can't drive too quick. You know, you're not going to hurt yourself if you, you know, if you lose it in that. Um, but what else do I have? Uh, I have a couple of Lotus, is it light low ties, sorry, 
<laughs> so, so here's a question. <laughs> uh, I, of all the cars, let's discount those. If you've got an itch that you, you're yet to scratch that you want to have, what would it be? Ooh, that's a really difficult question. Because I I have just got delivered my Lotus Avaya, the electric one, 2004. Okay. Oh, mate, I saw yeah. the video of that. Yeah, which is pretty <laughs> insane. Um, so if, I mean, if, if I got given it, it would 100% be a 250 GTR. I mean, you can't. You can't <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. For me, it would probably be, it would probably be a lightweight E-Type and race yeah. it a good one. Prettiest car that was ever made. So Enzo said, and I think he's probably right, isn't he? I agree. Apart from the 250 yeah. GT. Yeah, yeah, you're not you're <laughs> not the first person, believe it or not. You're not the first person on this podcast series to actually suggest that that would be their, their all-time fantasy. It's come up a few times, as you might imagine. Oh, lovely. Well, I mean, I could go and plug my own company, which I wouldn't do, but Radford Motors do an amazing bespoke. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. That's a really groovy-looking thing, isn't it? It's and engineered beautifully and all those things. It's beautifully curvaceous, but you should check out the Pikes Peak one, which is just... Funny enough, I did look at that the other day, actually, online. It's a monster. So that's actually in Vegas at the moment. So uh, I'm looking forward to going to see that soon. Um, no, wicked. So we're, we're enjoying it. So it's bloody hard business, but we're building a great product. So that's the most important thing. So Dave, Dave, I know we're out of yeah. time. Gents, I know we're out of time, but just give us... 30 seconds on what you reckon Vegas will be for F1 this weekend. Cold, um, weirdly, in the desert in nighttime in, the, in November. But um, I, I've looked at the track and I've seen all the simulations and it looks a lot, this is going to sound bad, it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. It's mm -hmm. fast. Yeah, it looks really, really fast, which the guys are going to need it to be to get those tyres working. The show is going to be off the scale. It's going to be yeah. off the charts which is what Vegas is all about, right? And mm -hmm. that's where we're going. We're not going for the best race in the world because that probably happens in Spa or somewhere like that. Yeah. Uh, but the event itself is going to be out of this world. It's just a pity in the UK it's going to be 6 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> On a Sunday, you're definitely not going up for that, Jersey. <laughs> Mate, I've got, I've, to I've got a series point. record all set, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think it's, it's great that everyone's doing this. As long as we don't take away, you know, the proper driver's tracks, Spa, Suzuka, Silverstone. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have a mix. With 24 races, you've got to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I can't yeah. wait for Martin's grid, grid walk. That's going to be a bit interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. Good old Martin. I yeah. love his grid walks. Good. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, listen, we look forward to it. One final question before we let yes. you go, Jensen. Uh, music and cars go well together, we always say. So we'd like your fantasy drive, please. Where are you? Where are you going? What are you listening to? And most importantly, what are you driving? Okay. Um, I am going to drive my car at the garage, which is a singer. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Um, nice. I would drive to Stunt Road. In California, there's a, okay. a, a canyon road here, Stunt, which is beautiful. Very mm -hmm. quiet. Weekends, it gets a bit busy. I'd go on a Wednesday. Uh, and um, what am I listening to? I'm yeah. really into my country music. Are you really? <laughs> Good on you. What? What? I love Thumbs in the belt, hoops. Jelly Roll. Oh, Jelly I'm writing roll. that down. Jelly Roll. you, you got to check out Jelly Roll. Okay. Most unlikely country artist probably ever really? um, he's so good check out jelly roll do you know what jason on that note I think oh, do we have to do out. we have to i know we he's on a junkie he's got to, to go to. but come on let's break the mold and let's go on for another hour shall we <laughs> <laughs> sadly that shocked. is it that is it for this week fueling around powered by adrian flux as the uk's largest specialist insurance broker adrian flux will tailor quote your exact needs and help save you money on your car your bike or even your home insurance. Mm. Dave, as always, thanks to you, but a huge thanks to our mate, the one and only Mr. Jensen Button. Don't forget the documentary series Braun, The Impossible F1 Story, is released today on Disney+, Plus and looks like an absolute corker. As always, you can get in touch with us on Twitter, at Jason Plato, at David Bitty. And if you've liked what you've heard, feel free to give us a five-star rating, press the follow button, and share the podcast on all your socials. Uh, thanks for listening, folks, and, uh, well, we'll see you next time. Ta-da! Ta-da!